All right, so today we're continuing proving triangles are congruent. Guys, help me out. What were the first two ways, basically shortcut ways, did we have for showing triangles congruent? What are they? Side, 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 side. Yep, yeah, so side, side, side congruence and side angle, side congruence. I just need three things. Today we're adding on, okay? Now today you are going to get angle, side, angle congruence. So, without even looking at the proofs, I bet you guys can already tell me what I'm going to write down later. How many pairs of congruent angles do I need? Two. I have to have a pair of congruent what? Sides. And they're going to go where? Uh, in between the two angles. The name, the abbreviation tells it all, doesn't it? Now look at the next one. I have what's called angle, angle, side congruence. Honestly, it's the same thing as angle, side, angle. Now, it has to go in order. The side has to still correspond. But think about it. If I have two pairs of congruent angles congruent to two angles of another triangle, what do you know about your third angles? So you could mark it so it would be angle, side, angle. I'll show you when we get there to that proof. Um, any other guesses of what we might have? What do you think about this one? Think we're going to have that? Guess what we're not going to have? Please don't spell it the wrong way. Thank you very much. We're a Christian school people. Okay. We only spell it one way. Side, side angle in this class. All right. I will show you why again in a little bit why that doesn't work, except for for one case, which we're going to use, and that's going to be the hypotenuse leg congruence. When I talk about hypotenuse and leg, what type of triangle am I talking about? A right triangle. So it has to be a right triangle that we're working with this. So today, we're going to be done with this. We're going to have five things in our tool chest that we can use to prove triangles congruent. The rule of three still holds true. You will always show three things. Three pairs of congruency or three things have to happen. Make sense? All right, some terminology that we need to make sure that we know on this is the idea of the included side. Now, when we had an included angle, that angle was between my two sides, correct? So when I have an included side, we know it's the um, common side between two consecutive angles. So basically, segment PQ right here is included between angle P and Q. So it's between, it's smack dab between. Guys, what would be your included side for angle Q and angle R? Yeah, segment QR. Guys, what's your included side for angle P and angle R? Segment um, PR, right? I mean, that's how easy it is. When you think included means between, doesn't that make a lot of sense? Yeah, it makes it very easy. Now, I know this is printed right on your notes, but it wasn't printed right in mine when I was working with these. But it's called the angle side angle congruence. Guys, it's exactly what it sounds like, angle side angle. That means I have to have two pairs of congruent corresponding angles and one pair of congruent corresponding sides, and that side <coughs> has to be located between the two angles. It's as simple as it sounds. So when you look there and marked on one of the triangles, it would literally spell angle, side, angle. Okay? So let's plug it in. If two angles in the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So again, I have that three pairs of things. But if it spells angle, side, angle, we're good. Now, here's the one thing you always have to remember. You can never, ever prove triangles congruent unless you have at least one pair of sides congruent, ever. Because it gives us limitations that we need. All right. Now, we can use what's called angle, angle, side congruence. And it's really angle, side, angle using the third angle theorem, right? Using the third angle theorem. Some of you, most of you have a good idea what the third angle theorem is. You just didn't always express it really well in your quiz yesterday. Some of you, like, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, they have the idea. They didn't write one down what they wanted to. So you had some points taken off because you just weren't clear. So if you got, like, minus one on wording on your quiz the other day, it's because I'm, like, trying to get there, not quite there. You know, it's... I'm starting to see, yeah, then no. It kind of was like, you're going, but not there. It's really easy. That one would have been easier just to memorize the theorem, actually. It would have been made your life easier. So let's talk about this one. Angle, angle, side congruence. How many pairs of congruent angles do you need to have? <coughs> Two. How many pairs of congruent sides? 
one, but that side has to correspond perfectly. So notice where angle J is and angle M is, the side is right next to it. It has to match perfectly next to the right one or it won't work. Um, but here's why it works. How many pairs of congruent angles do you guys see on there? Two. So what do you know about the third pair? They're congruent, right? So isn't this true? If that's true, isn't that really angle side angle? So the reason why angle angle side congruence works is because I can show it using which one? Angle side angle. So basically angle angle side is a corollary there almost, if you want to think about it. It just saves time. Are you guys with me on that? I don't have to waste my time using the third angle theorem at all. I can just go straight to it knowing how it works. But again, guys, location, location, location matters on this one. So let's fill it in. If two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent, two, two angles and a non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Looking at this, do you see why we use the abbreviation all of a sudden for the name? It tells you everything you need to know and I don't have to write it out forever. But this would be an easy fill in the blank question for like a test. And here's the reason why. If you know angle, angle, side congruence, couldn't you almost fill in the words anyway? Because how many pairs of congruent angles do you have? Oh, two. Where does the side have to be? Not included. It's very easy to use the abbreviation to tell you what to get. All right, so let's have a little bit of fun with this and get our last one. I'm giving you all the theorems first right away. Did you notice that? Just get them over with. The next one is called hypotenuse leg theorem. All right, so guess what I'm going to work with? The hypotenuses and the what? And the legs. So I need a hypotenuse that's congruent in both triangles, and I need a pair of legs that are congruent in both triangles. But it has to be what type of triangle? So here's the third thing. Everything else on the other forms, you always have to show me like corresponding parts that are congruent. Here you're going to have to show me a pair of corresponding hypotenuses or corresponding sides, right, congruent. A pair of corresponding legs, that's the second thing. The third thing is somewhere in your theorem it has to state the right triangles. Because if they're not stated right triangles, you can't do this theorem. So that's going to be your third piece of information you must have for a hypotenuse leg. Everyone with me on that? Okay, you have to have it. You have to state somewhere in your proof that it's a right triangle or you cannot use <clears throat> hypotenuse leg theorem. So let's write this one down. Hypotenuse leg theorem says the following. If the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. All right, now remember, hypotenuse leg is basically saying side, side angle, okay? Because if I was to label this, oops, spelled it the wrong way, mm -hmm, let's go on this one instead, mm -hmm. okay, anyway, side, side angle, We can't use that unless it's a right triangle. Let me explain to you why side, side, angle doesn't work. Are you guys ready for Mrs. Gregerson's explanation? All right, when you have side, side, angle, you can have a side, let's say this is 10, this side is five, and let's just say the angle I know, let's see if I can do the angle over here, somewhere over here, right? Now, if I have side, side, angle, could I redraw, because I don't know the red side's length, could I redraw it like the following? Let's see if it will let me do it without. All right, so I have the side of 10. Can this be a side of five? Notice my triangle. Exact same angle was given. So here's my pair of congruent sides. Here's my pair of congruent sides. 
But what happened to that side that's length five? It could get hinged over, right? Are those two congruent triangles? No, but I have a pair of congruent, two pairs of congruent sides and a pair of congruent angles. That's why side side angle doesn't work unless it's what type of triangle? A right triangle. And then because of the Pythagorean theorem stuff, it's very easy for us to argue the point with the, with the right triangle. So that's why side side angle. doesn't work. Nope. Nope. If you ever write side side angle down, check to see if it's a right triangle. Because if that's the case, then it's hypotenuse leg. Make sense? So if you, I always tell people, like, if you spell that, be leery. Okay? You did something wrong unless it's a right triangle. You cannot use it otherwise. Location matters of the angle a lot when you're doing it. So doesn't work. Now, we all have these down. Do you guys think we could rock this pretty easily? All right, you are going to have to be able to look at diagrams and tell me if they're congruent or not based off it. And sometimes you can have more than one argument. So let's look at this first one. The thing that I want to remind you is you should always mark what's congruent and always label one of the triangles using A, S, or, you know, or even H if you wanted to, to what are the congruent parts. So that way it literally spells to you what you have. So, <coughs> so on this first one, it has 250 degree angles, so you guys agree with me. This one's congruent, and this one's congruent, right? I have two 15 degree angles, so this is congruent, and this is congruent. And I also have a pair of congruent sides. So if I was to label on one triangle the parts that are congruent, using the abbreviation, don't I have angle, side, angle? So are they congruent? Yeah. So you're going to go angle, side, angle. Um, some of you are getting points taken off for this. What does it have to be after angle, side, angle? The congruent symbol. So please use the congruent symbol. I'm not going to write, make you write theorem or anything like that. Now, look at the next one. This one I'd actually let you say a couple different ways. There's one I want you to think, obviously, but there's more than one way of doing this. Do you guys agree with me I have two right angles? If I have two right angles, do I have right triangles? And do I have the hypotenuse? and the leg of those right triangles congruent. So the one I wanted you to see right away is hypotenuse leg congruence. But I'm going to write an or here. Or what else could prove this triangle is congruent? I heard side, side, side. I heard someone whisper side, side, side. How in the world did I get side, side, side out of that? What do I got? Yep, yeah, we got the reflexive property. Good. Reflexive property. Or... What else could I use? Can I use SAS? Can I use some attitude? Can I use side angle side? Because you guys agree with me, I have here you could have, I'm going to move the H and the L here, side angle side this way because of the right angles. And we know all right angles are congruent. So honestly, I wanted you to see hypotenuse leg, but if you saw, okay, let's just go there. If you saw the other two and you were doing a proof, would I just be happy? Yeah, it'd be totally fine. All right, how about the next one, guys? There's probably a couple different ways you could do this one. How about for number three? What would you do? A lot of you said side, 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 right? S, 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 so side, side, side. Congruence. Did anyone see some sass? <laughs> this is the one time I can get away with it as a teacher. Did anyone have some sass? You want to give me some sass? Thank you very much. Your mothers would be wondering what's going on in here, right? Like, But it works. Because I can use the vertical angles, right? And you can see side, angle, side that way. So great. Either one of those are true to use. And I wouldn't care which one, as long as you saw it. Sound like a plan? All right, let's look at the next one. Let's look at our directions. It says, determine if you can use the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem to prove triangles congruent. If not, tell what else you need to know. So first of all, guys, on A, can I tell, can I use <coughs> the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem on A? Yes or no? Yes, okay? And you know for me I'm going to ask why because there's just no other way that I would do that. <laughs> okay, why can I use hypotenuse leg fingerprints on this one? Trevor? Because you can use the reflexive property to show that the other side is So that gives me my leg, right? Okay, so I already have the hypotenuse. Now remember, what's the other thing I have to show for hypotenuse leg? I have to have what? Another leg. Another leg, all right, which we got. And we have another hypotenuse, but don't I have to have right triangles? The moment I write that right angle in, which we know it can because it's a linear pair, right? We know they're right triangles. So yes, that totally works. Smiley face. All right. 
How about B? I want to prove that triangles are congruent. <coughs> what do I know? I know they're what? Are they right triangles? All right, so I have right triangles. Check. One of my things I have to know. What's the other thing that I know? I have congruent legs. Check. What's missing? Yeah. So I uh, the hypotenuse. <coughs> nope, not there. So explain why. You know, I just that need to show hypotenuses are congruent. Easy explanation why without being too complicated on this one. Too complicated. All right, let's do some proofs, okay? Let's do some proofs. We're, I'm going to overkill you on proofs, I'm hoping, today. If we don't get through all of them, don't worry. I'll put it on the video. It's just here to help us. All right, looking at the first ones. Okay, I want to prove triangles are congruent. The moment I say triangles are congruent, you now have, again, five ways to prove triangles are congruent. They're all fair game. Um, also, shouldn't you always, always, always mark up your given, my friends? What do you guys think? <coughs> all right. So with this, I want to show the two triangles. ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. So the first thing I have, I have the fact that angle FAB is congruent to angle GED. Does anyone see a slight issue with this right now? It's where? Outside the triangle. Darn it. How can I use that to get something inside the triangle? Michael. All right, so we're going to use linear pairs, but we have to prove that, though. But I'm going to go with you. Guys, do I have linear pairs? So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Basically, congruent supplements theorem is going to come save the day, people, okay, is what's going to happen. So I have a linear pair, just like Michael said. So I have angle FAB and angle BAC are a linear pair. Now, I need to do that the same thing for my other triangle and angle, right? So we're going to sit there and say angle GED and angle or GED and then be DEC are a linear pair as well. The moment we know they're a linear pair, we know they're what to each other? If angles are linear pair, they're what, guys? Supplementary. So we know angle FAB and angle BAC are supplementary. I also know angle GED and angle DEC are supplementary. Now, and that's just the linear pair theorem. Remember, the linear pair theorem we use, we manipulate in a way that helps us the best. Do we use the word supplementary, or do we actually show the add of 20? This time I want to go quicker, so I'm just saying that they're supplementary. Because if I have two angles that are supplementary to congruent angles, they're what? They're congruent, right? So guys, look what you've got then next. So right here, I know angle BAC is congruent to angle DEC by the congruent supplements theorem. So now I can go ahead and mark it on my diagram. Mm -hmm. I know these two are congruent to each other. All right, now guys, what I haven't done at all yet? Have I used my other given yet? <coughs> so let's do that. So a number five here. I still have the fact that angle ABC is congruent to angle EDC. And that's given. Now, can I put my other given on this just to save us some space? Is that fair? And it's the line segment, but that's okay because they're still just what? Given? I'm just doing this so we can save space so we don't have to write a lot of different ones. So I have segment AC is congruent to segment EC. And a lot of you, if you wrote that separately, that's fine. So I know those two are congruent to each other. Now, 
Remember the way that you decide what it is, is take one of those triangles and label the congruency things. So what do I have here? I have an angle, angle what? Side, right? <coughs> so are my triangles congruent? Yeah. So therefore I know triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC by angle, angle, side, congruence. Now, we had to use the linear pair theorem and the congruent supplements theorem, but it's still, it was still doable. It was still only a six, seven, seven, seven. It doesn't matter if you want to put your given separately or not. Are we good so far? Are you starting to see how to do these? For which one? No, I need them to be a linear pair, or I can't say that. They're supplementary. So no, I have to say that they're a linear pair. Nope, good question to ask. Um, next one. Write which postulate, if any, can be used to prove the pair of triangles congruent. You're actually going to have a section <coughs> like this on your test, where I'll give you all these triangles, and I'll be like, are they congruent or not? They might not be, they might be. So looking at this first one, are those triangles congruent? Do you see the two triangles we're looking at? What did you guys say, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Why? <coughs> All right, can we do, isn't that a reflexive property going to be used? So if you're not thinking about it, you'd get side-side angle. Would that work? Remember, if you get side-side angle, you look to see if it's what type of triangle. If it's a right triangle, do you have hypotenuse and leg? Then it's yes. So you're going to have hypotenuse leg congruence is going to be used. So just be careful on our explanations with this one. All right, how about the next one? Are those two triangles congruent to each other? Yeah. Guys, do I have a right angle over here, right, because of linear pairs? Do I have the reflexive property going to be used? And if I mark one of my triangles up using A and S, I have angle, side, angle. Do you see if you do that, how it just spells it out to you, what you're doing? So it's just angle, side, angle, congruence. How about the next one? I mean, I look at this and I see at least reflexive property, right? I'm not, if you sit there and go, yes, I have two pairs of sides and a pair of angles. What's the problem? Because guys, look at, I have side, side, angle. Where does the angle have to be? Between the two sides. So this is in the wrong location. So the answer is none of these work. And it's all about the location of the angle being in the wrong spot. So that one does not work because you had side, side, angle this time. All right, how about the next one, D? Does that work? Yeah, I have a pair of reflexive sides. And if I write down, again, my pairs of congruency between my triangles, I have an angle, angle, what do we have? Side. So angle, angle, side, congruence. Are you guys ready to do some more proofs? All right, let's gonna do some more proofs together. And some of these we're gonna throw you off a little bit. Some of them I think are gonna seem pretty easy for you. Looking at this right away, <clears throat> if you see right angles, do not automatically say hypotenuse leg. But don't also automatically throw it out. Okay, that's always an option, so you have to keep that in mind. If you're wrong, a lot of times you have to change one step and your proof is all perfect otherwise. So looking at this, we're given the following. B is the midpoint of segment AC. Guys, if I give you a midpoint, what do you give me? So we're going to put it down. All right. So put our given, and then we're going to put our two congruent segments. So is the midpoint. Wow. Great writing on my part. Of segment AC. So we got segment AB is going to be congruent to segment CB. And that's just definition of a midpoint. Because if I give you midpoint, you give back to me two congruent segments. Great. Now what do I do? Given which given do you want to use? All right. You want to use the line segments? Great. You can do that. That's the cool thing, you guys. Remember, you can put them out of order if you want. So segment EB is congruent to segment DB. All right. I'm looking at this. And I'm seeing side, actually this should be three, sorry, side angle. Can I have side, side angle? Not unless it's what? 
a right triangle. Guys, can I write down, can I some way get to the point that those are right triangles? All right, so the moment I'm like, whew, I can go ahead and get the right triangles, my thought process now just turned from with congruent sides to hypotenuse what? Leg. Notice I'm writing all this down before I even do the work. I'm just working it through in my head first. So let's do the next part. We've got to go to our given because we've got to get right triangles somewhere mentioned in my proof. So we have the fact that angle E and angle D are right angles. And that's just given. Since they are right angles, is this true? Triangle ABE and triangle CBD are right triangles. How did I know that? It's definition of a right triangle, right? If I have a right angle, do I have a right triangle? Yeah, so it's definition of a right triangle. Now guys, here's the cool part. The moment I said it's a right triangle, did those sides just turn into a hypotenuse and a leg? So the cool thing is, you're done now. You're at your therefore statement. Therefore, I know triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBD by hypotenuse leg congruence. Now, guys, <coughs> just be very careful. I still had to show three things. I had to show right triangles and two pairs of congruent sides. Hypotenuse leg is just a little bit twisted different than the other ones. The other ones are real straightforward. All right, should we try another one? See how you guys do? Yes, ma'am. Um, do we have to put the congruent side or is there like a hypotenuse? Here's the thing. Don't drop your habit. Always write it down because you always want to be thinking it's congruency. All right? Yes, I'm going to make you. <laughs> All right, next one. But there is not a hypotenuse leg similarity. That's the only type of theorem that one is. Um, it says angle B and angle D are right angles, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The moment you saw angle 1 congruent to angle 2, can I kind of throw out the idea of hypotenuse leg? What do you guys think? Yeah, because hypotenuse leg deals with the sides. So the nice thing is here, I don't have to worry about that. <coughs> so go ahead and write that down. Angle B and angle D are right angles. And guys, what do you know about all right angles? Yeah, so my very next thing is angle B is congruent to angle D. All right angles are congruent. Guys, I got a pair of A's, I got an angle. Then I'm stuck, so I go back to my given. I get angle one is congruent to angle two. And so that's given to you, but it shouldn't I probably mark my diagram too? I got another pair of angles now. So I got angle, angle. <coughs> Guys, anything else? AC, right? I'm hearing a lot of people whisper, AC, yeah. Segment AC, and no, I'm gonna write it like this. Segment AC is congruent to segment CA. Again, if you said AC is congruent to AC, would I give you full credit? Yeah, I'm just matching up my vertices early. So with this one, that's just a reflexive property. All right, so I knew that's true. So guys, how are these two triangles congruent? What does it spell on that one triangle? Angle, angle, side, right? Excellent. So therefore, I know triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, and that's by angle, angle, side, congruence. All right, homework here. Let me pause.